Hey y'all, it's Bridget Moses from Vincent and Bridget Moses Godly Encouragement here with some more Godly Encouragement for you. Today is Thursday and we are talking about 2 Corinthians 12, 9 in the NLT version. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. We've got to read that again, y'all. It's so good. God's word is powerful. It is living and it, ha it really gives us life when we hear it. And we can never hear it too many times. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Yeah, that is so good. That's such good news. The Greek word for sufficient or works best here is archaeo. And the definition is to keep off assist, to suffice, pass, to be satisfied. The origin is apparently a primary verb, but probably akin to iral through the idea of raising a barrier, properly to ward off, um, by implication to avail, figuratively to be satisfactory. Uh, the usage is be content, be enough, suffice, or be sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. It is enough. It is enough to help us to be content. Even when things are not in a way that uh, normally people would be content in. Uh, I'm going to go over the word for grace again in the Greek which is charis, or charis, you'll hear people say. Uh, definition, grace is a gift or blessing brought to men by Jesus Christ. It's favor, it's gratitude, it's thanks, it's a favor, and kindness. Uh, the origin is from chairo, which is graciousness as gratifying of manner or act out of concrete, literal, figurative, or spiritual, especially the divine influence upon the heart and its uh, reflection in life, in the life, um, including gratitude. The usage is acceptable, benefit, favor, gift, grace, gracious, uh, joy, liberality, pleasure, thank, thanks, and thanksworthy. The word used here in the Greek for um, weakness or weaknesses is asthenia. And the definition is want of strength, weakness, illness, suffering, calamity, and frailty. Um, the origin is from asthenes, which is feebleness of mind or body, or by implication, malady, um, morally frailty. Uh, the usage is disease, infirmity, sickness, or weakness. And the word for power here is dunamis. Uh, the definition is physical power, force, might, ability, efficacy, energy, and meaning. Um, the plural is powerful deeds, uh, deeds showing physical power, um, or marvelous works, uh, and originates from the word dunami, um, uh, which, or dunami, dunami probably, uh, force, uh, literally or figuratively, 
especially miraculous power, usually by implication, a miracle itself. But we can all use some dunamis, huh? Uh, the usage is ability, abundance, meaning, might, mightily, mighty, or mighty deed. Uh, worker of miracle or worker of miracles, power, strength, violence, mighty, wonderful work. That's awesome. The phrase uh, work through me in the Greek is teleo. And the definition is to end or finish, um, to fulfill or accomplish, or to pay. Um, and it originates from telos, which means to end. Um, example, complete, execute, conclude, discharge a debt. And its usage is accomplish, make an end, expire, fill up, finish, go over, pay, or perform. Now I'm going to go back and read the verse again because it is now that we know what those words mean in the Greek. Because um, the reason why I go over the Hebrew and the Greek definitions is because it paints. That's the original language it was written in. And it helps us to get a bigger picture of the true meaning of the verses that we're reading. I have found so many things um, and, you know, different translations are great. Um, it's good to read more than one. Um, as you'll notice, I will, you know, read some from, uh, you know, some days I'll have some from one version and some days I'll have some from another version. And some days I'll have some from multiple versions um, because it's really important to get the most complete picture that you can because um, the English language is so limited, we have to um, look to the original language it was written in to get the broadest picture, to get the clearest picture. Um, so 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 in the New Living Testament, the NLT, says, Each time he said, My grace is all you need, and he saying is God. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. So his grace is able to keep off, assist, suffice, or satisfy everything we need. His dunamis, his... Uh, um, his miraculous power, um, his physical power, force, might, ability, efficacy, energy, meaning, his mir miraculous power, his miraculous works, works best in our weakness. And our weakness is our want of strength weakness, illness, suffering, calamity, and frailty, any area that we are not strong in, God's dunamis power rests in there when we receive that by faith. We have to receive it by faith. God is not just going to allow his power to be accessed just because it's available. He allows us to be partners with him to pull what is already there and made available out of the heavenly realm into, out of the heavenly supernatural realm into our natural realm, into our lives, into our circumstances. And it's so important. Faith is a daily walk. We are always in faith. Let me say something about faith. I, I don't remember who it was. I've heard so many people. I've heard T.D. Jakes talk on it. I've heard Joyce Meyer talk on it. Um, but faith, we put faith in everything all day, every day. We use faith every day, whether we realize it or not. Um, I, I know it was T.T. Jakes that said, um, when you sit down in a chair, you have faith that it's going to hold you up. So you have, you're using faith, whether you realize it or not. But you have to use your faith to access God's promises and God's provision that's he, that he's already made available. If you don't use your faith, you're not going to access what has been made available. The only way to access it 
access it is by faith. And the only way that you have the right to access it is through the blood of Jesus. Now, if you've, uh, if you've received Jesus, if you've confessed, Jesus with your, confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you've confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, believe, that's putting faith in it, then you will be saved. That's all you need to walk in the miraculous power of God. Then you have been, been given the measure of faith. We all have the same measure. It's just some of us are exercising the faith that God has given us a little more than others. It has to be developed. It, it's, it's, you know, it's a process. We use it little by little. It's a, it's a faith walk. We go from glory to glory. But we have to access it in the little things to strengthen our faith muscle enough to be able to pull what is the, those big things into the earth realm because they're already there for us there's no shortage of blessings in heaven don't get it twisted god does not run out of blessings god does not run out of provision god does not run out of anything but we have to access it using our faith it's there for us it belongs to us it rightfully belongs to us because jesus is our inheritance we are co-heirs with christ which means and god owns everything the bible says the the earth is his in the fullness thereof that means none of us own anything we are only stewards god has blessed us with stewarding his possessions so we are joint heirs with christ which means that we have everything that jesus has we are in covenant with him we have everything that jesus has is ours too there is no shortage of provision, but we have to access that by our faith. And it has to be within the confines of the will of God. And the will of God is laid out in Scripture. Um, let me see here. God has already, already, past tense, given us everything we need for life and godliness. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 in the ESV, English Standard Version, that his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things. Nothing's left out of that. Through the knowledge of him. How do we get to know him? Through his word who called us to his own glory and excellence. I'm going to read that again so it's streamlined. His divine power has granted to us all things that per pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. That means the more that we know what we have in him, the more that we can obtain because he's already given it to us. He's given us everything we will need for life and godliness. He's given us to us all things. Nothing is left out of all. Whatever you need is found in him. But if you don't know that you have access to that in the first place, you can't utilize your faith to obtain it. And the way you utilize your faith is by belief, confession, Receive. Believe, confess, receive. Act. Believe, confess, receive, act on it as if it's already done. Because if your actions are not aligned with your confession, it's not faith. It's just belief. Believe. Uh, let me see. Believe, receive, confess, act. Believe, receive, sorry, I got them mixed up. I wanted to make sure I got it right. I had to pray for a second. Believe, receive, confess, act on it. And it's not our word. It's not our word that he's bringing to pass. It's his word that he's bound to bring to pass. He's, he literally has to bring his, path, his word to pass. He says, my word does not return unto me void. When we speak his word, angels go 
to work on our behalf to bring that to pass. The more that our actions or our words speak against his word, they got to back up some steps. They got to come back some. They have to retreat a little bit because we're not walking in faith. Hope, belief, faith. Hope, belief, faith. Hope turns into a belief. Belief then gives birth to faith. Um, as long as Jesus is the Lord of our life, which means we have surrendered our will to his, which means we don't do what we want to do. Um, we're not the Lord of our life. If we're doing what we want to do without asking God first, then we're on the throne, not him. And we have to be very careful about that because if we are on the throne of our life, we are meant, we're the ones that have to carry the burden, right? We're the ones that are responsible for carrying the weight of that, or the weight of our decisions, the consequences of our decisions. However, if we surrender and submit ourselves to God and we seek him first before making decisions, he said, seek me first in all things, or seek me, seek me in the kingdom first, and all these things will be added to you. We have to seek him first before we make a decision because he knows all the pitfalls. He knows all the ins and outs. He knows if a, if, a, um, if a business or a vehicle or a house or whatever or a person is going to not be good in the long run. And we can avoid a whole lot of problems if we just seek him first. God says, seek me and you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. It's a ask and it will be given to you. Uh, knock and the door will be opened unto you. Or seek and you will, you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. God says in the Bible, we have not because we ask not. A lot of things that we do is because we're doing it in our own wisdom. We don't realize that we have the wisdom of God at our hand. We have the mind of Christ. We've been given the mind of Christ. We are filled with the Holy Spirit, but we have to let him lead. So as long as Jesus is the Lord of our life, as long as we said, okay, great, I'm so grateful that you have saved me and you are my savior, but I want to make you Lord too. I know that you have the best, that your plans for me are good for a future and a hope, uh, to give us a future and a hope, or not farm, to give us a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know your plans for me are good. Can you help me? And I know that you wrote all my days were written before the foundations of the earth were laid. So Lord, help me to get there the easiest way possible, which is his way. But we have to do it his way. Or we're the ones that are responsible for the fallout. And he, God is gracious and he is merciful. But if we keep ignoring his word and his will, and we are just hearers and not doers, we will have to suffer the consequences and we will have to answer for our actions. Just like any child would with their parents. The parents give them the rules they keep on not listening to the rules. They keep on trying to do things their own way. They're going to have to suffer the consequences. Does that mean that the parent doesn't love them? No. Does it mean that the parent is going to, you know, kick them out and, you know, not deal with them anymore? No. But it does mean that the children miss out on intimacy with the, with the parents because the relationship is strained. Not only that, but the child suffers because... Not only are they doing something that's not good for them, but they get have to deal with the consequences of their actions. God is a loving father, and he deals with us the same way. So as long as Jesus is the Lord of our life, we already have everything within us in seed form that's needed to accomplish his purpose for our lives. That's awesome. 
And we get everything in seed form. Everything has to be watered. Everything has to be developed. You have to know that that's what you got to do. And how we do that is by reading God's word, reading, speaking God's word, worshiping God, praying in the natural and in our heavenly language in tongues, which builds us up and edifies us. We have everything we need, but it's put on us to water the seed. It's up to us to water those seeds with God's word. This means that even though we don't have everything we need in and of ourselves, we have everything we need in Christ. But once again, God makes, you know, God lays out the game plan. He has laid out the, the template of how to obtain these things. And it's by following him, by surrendering, by submitting. Yes, his favor is awesome. But the best life that you can have is by allowing him to be Lord. Because he will make sure that you never, ever fail. You will still have struggles. God doesn't remove the struggles, but he helps us through them. And we have the promise that no matter what we go through, we will be victorious on the other side of it. And we'll come out with better character, more intimacy with him, deeper trust developed in him and a stronger endurance. That's the promise. But we can choose to go our own way and delay the victory, push that victory off, um, and struggle our way there worse than if we were not there's a struggle with faith too but it's not the same struggle as being prideful and doing it our own way and not even asking God not taking the time to pray and seek him on things that's prideful because we're saying we don't need God we're saying we know more than him we're saying that, um, you know, other people may need to pray, but we don't need to because we already know. There's a process. God has a, a template. You know, he has spiritual laws and principles that we need to live by. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 in the ESV says, For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong, because I have him in me. Philippians 4 Chapter 4, 13, uh, verse 13 in the ESV says, I can do all things through, Christ, through him who strengthens me, him being Christ. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That has been a verse that I say frequently. I've said so many times, I say it regularly. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Because I need to remind myself that I'm not doing stuff on my own. That I have available to me the power of a limitless power God. And therefore, when I'm feeling powerless, I'm not. That's a lie of the enemy to get me, to keep me from walking in what God has for me. And it's the same with you. We can do all things through him who strengthens us. As long as it lines up with his will. That's what the all things entails. Ephesians 6, chapter 6, verse 10 in the ESV says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Or in this, this version says, in the strength of his might. Other versions say, in the power of his might. That's another one I say all the time. That's why I said it that way. Um, finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. His strength, not ours. What an awesome, 
awesome gift we have available to us in grace. Grace is so powerful. When we take our weaknesses before God, he not only um, gives us mercy and grace, but he gives us the grace to empower us to overcome them. There's God's saving grace, and there's God's empowering grace. His grace not only saves us and is sufficient, but it emp it empowers us to do what we cannot do in and of ourselves. Hope that's good news to you. I know it was good good news to me when I found that out, and it took me a while to to fully trust in His grace being sufficient enough. It, everything with God is a process. It takes time. And we have to give ourselves grace through the process. Yeah, we serve an amazing God. Amazing God. He's awesome. Receive his grace so that one, you can give it to others because everybody else needs grace too. And then use his grace to empower you to do what you could never do on your own. Which is what I did. I, I did that. I received his grace and help, his grace empowered me to come off of methadone, which I never thought I'd be able to come off of. It's harder than any other op opiate to come off of. And God did it miraculously after being on opiates for 21 years. God's grace empowered that. God's grace, I didn't even know how to write an email 10 years ago. Literally, I didn't know how to send an email. I didn't know how to use an app. I didn't know how to use a computer. I had no skills. God has taught me everything I know. The Holy Spirit is awesome. We just have to rely on him. He's an awesome teacher, and he empowers us to do what he's teaching us. I love y'all. I'll talk to you later. See you Saturday. Bye.